And Matthew chapter 11 is where we're going to be speaking from today. A couple of weeks ago, we studied what it meant to take up your cross and follow God. And we've been talking about what it means to truly follow Jesus Christ. And, to, and today we have a lot of people that want to gather around his blessings, but we don't know what it truly means to take up your cross. And that cross, he said, if any man does not take up his cross, he is not worthy of me. The cross, he said, was a symbol of, it was a symbol of sacrifice. And a lot of Christians today just, give me, give me a pew to sit in and a song to sing and make me feel good and, and tickle my ears and things. And God said, man, you've missed it. You might be a, tr- a churchgoer, but you're not a true disciple of Christ if, if that's what you think it's all about. He went on to say that we started the cross and it was a symbol of surrender. The Bible tells that he laid down his life. When Jesus Christ invites us to take up our cross, he's not going to hold a gun to us and say, you've got to do this. No, he's looking for surrendered Christians and say, I desire to follow you. Then it was a tool that God used. It's an incredible tool that God used to bring salvation. And as we follow Christ, that is our job. Because Jesus said, if I am high and lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. But I, I, I want to kind of go in today about the, the joy Of the journey. Because so often you look at it and say, all right, a lot of people are like inching out of the service and saying, oh, great, take up your cross, be crucified, lay it down, give it all up, sacrifice your money, sacrifice, and you're like, woohoo, you know, I'm really excited now. I I, I said this, then I'll say it again. I've never met anybody that regretted serving God. Never. I, I don't regret one thing that I've done for God. I, I, if you tap into all that God has, you're going to find out that you'll enjoy the journey that God sets us on. You'll enjoy following Christ when you tap into what it's all about. So you said, and they're going right now, I'll, I'll tell you what, I go to church, I do this and that. Something must be missing in my life because I, I don't get that. Man, I'm exhausted. I'm worn out. I'm thinking about quitting this and dropping out of this. I dread this. I dread that. Then something is wrong in your life. I take you back to the disciples, and I think we can get kind of a a, a picture of what Christ was saying through this. Here, he recruits these 12 men, and he gives them these passages. They drop their nets, and they followed him, and they denied themselves and all the things that we've already done. But I, I want to fast forward through their life, if I could, just for a minute. I want you to see that there had to be something bigger going on, because he comes up to these ordinary guys. These, these, these guys that were just like you and I, all right? They were not superheroes. There was not a halo. There was not a, 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 an orange glow around their heads like we see in these photographs and things like that. They were just regular guys. And they began to follow Christ. And these men were just fishermen and tax collectors. And they forsook all and they followed him. Three years later, Jesus Christ goes to the cross. Three days later, He walks out of the tomb. A number of days later, he ascends back to heaven, which brings us to Acts chapter 1. He ascends up to heaven. Oh, you guys don't have to turn there. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 2, we see them start coming out uh, of nowhere where these guys start preaching the gospel. and, And all of a sudden, these guys that we read about in the four gospels are not the same guys. Not the same guys that we see from here on out. I, I'm telling you, at one point over here in the Gospels, they were arguing, Lord, we want to know who's going to be sitting at the right hand of you when we get to heaven. I think it's me, and I think it's him. The Lord's like, what? Guys, come on, come on, come on. You, you are not getting this. At one point, they were arguing, who is going to be the greatest? Lord, which one of us is the greatest in your eyes? And he's, you can imagine, like, like a father treating his children. God, come on, guys, will you quit arguing with one another? You're not getting it. By the time we get to Acts, these guys are starting revivals. They're standing before kings and, 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 and leaders. They're seeing complete cities come to know Christ. They're traveling around the grove. They, they, they see and they preach to Stephen. Stephen stands before them, dies within the, being stoned. Saul is impacted by Stephen. Saul goes out, preaches the gospel. He influences Timothy. Timothy now has written about how he's preaching in churches. God is working through ordinary men. You read about John, wrote the book of Revelation, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, the book of John. You read about Peter writing two books, 
leader in the book of Acts. I take you to Luke who wrote one of the Gospels and turned it around and writes the history of the church in Acts chapter 2. I'm telling you, something happened to those ordinary guys within those three years. I got into it and I said, Lord, show me what happened. Show me, Lord, how at the end of their life, one by one, Peter, from history we read, was crucified. And the Bible, or or history tells us that if the story stands to be corrected or or to be true, that he, he died and they were crucifying Peter for his stand on the word of God. And as a result of that, he said, I don't want to die the same way. And they hung him upside down. You know what I find is crazy about that? Back in the Gospels, just being near Jesus, when he was about to go to that, he denied Jesus three times. And now he's saying it'd be an honor to die on a cross, but I don't even, I don't even, I don't want to die the same way he did, hang me upside down. Something happened from the time that they were tapped on the shoulder to the time that they gave their life for Christ. And I think we can trace it all back to two simple words, and that's when Jesus said, follow me. Here's the fact, the closer you walk with Jesus, the greater you'll experience a change in your life. The closer you get to walking with Jesus, you won't be the same guy or girl any longer. And I find out that it had nothing to do with all the things that we put emphasis. It wasn't the service that they had. It wasn't the miracles that they did. It wasn't the preaching that they preached. It had everything to do with the fact that they got in the presence of Almighty God. And a lot of Christians are going out and they're serving and they're doing and they're saying and they're preaching and they're teaching. But I tell you, if you leave out the follow me part and you leave out the presence of God in your life, you will fail in all that you do. Christians are throwing in the towel and giving up and pastors are walking away from pulpits and missionaries are coming off the field and you say, why? Jesus said, why? In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, I think if we were to talk to the disciples and say, man, what happened? I believe those guys would speak up and say, I- I'll be honest, we-, we, couldn't. we couldn't keep up. I'm telling you now, Jesus said, hey, I'm going to call you to be like me, which is Christ-like. Oh, what? You know, it's like, I want you to be like me. And these guys are like, there's no way. I'm I'm like a lot of you guys. I'm sitting there saying, dear God, there is no way. I love you, God. And I, I desire to do all these things, but I am not capable of doing what you are asking me to do. I'd imagine those disciples would say, well, let me tell you about the day all that changed. Jesus was teaching one day, and we got it from a whole new perspective. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus said unto us, come unto me, all ye that labor. Any of you guys had a long week working, doing stuff? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. All right. Some of you didn't raise your hand because you're too tired to raise your hand. You know, it's like... I mean, you know, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me, let me show you what the disciples learned. Let me show you how they were still going to lay down their life. Let me show you how they were able to write books and preach the gospel and see see cities come to know Christ. Let me show you what kept them going when they got in hard times and people were threatening their lives. Number one, let me show you the partnership. The partnership. I know we've been talking about the disciples, but let me bring this home to us. Have you ever felt like sometimes the calling that we have in our lives, and 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 I'm just, you, you can take off the, Classic happy face for a minute, okay? You can put off the facade of, you know, we say, how many of you are glad to be here today? Amen. And everybody says it. And some of you lied this morning. I'm I'm just kidding. It's a natural response. It's just something. Nobody wants to sit there and go, I'm not happy to be in church. Nobody wants to say that. But we say amen because we, we 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 want it to be true. 
But some of you are saying, I'm just tired. I've got, I've got today off, and I know people that work in our church that don't get days off. And then you're touring this battle because you come to church and the only things we do for Christ will last. Let's reach the lost. Let's preach the gospel. And you're like, okay, but I'm so tired. And I'm going to sign up and I'm going to do that, but I'm so exhausted and I, I, I just can't. You have your job. You have your ministry. Some of you are trying to parent in this day and age and that's not easy. Constantly cutting off this and don't do this. And what are you looking at? And turn that off. I mean, it's a full-time job. And then you jump into work and you're trying to do the very best. And then you find out that the taxes are being raised and insurance going up and bills are coming in and all this. And you say, so you've got to work a little more to take care of all that. Then you find out that the kids need braces and they need this uniform and that, that their tennis shoes cost $100 and da 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 da. It's just footwear, okay? And it's just like, how do I keep up? So you're involved in ministry and you have a heart to sing in the choir and teach the class and drive a bus and greet people at the door. And by the time you're said and done with everything, you are so worn out, you are falling into bed on Sunday night to drag out to hit Monday morning. Have, have I hit any uh, common ground with anybody here this morning? I, I could have easily preached on being weary and well-doing. You can imagine these disciples were so zealous to follow Jesus Christ, but man, they're just tuckered out. We've all felt this way. Notice who he is calling out to. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. The word labor means to feel fatigue, to work hard, to labor, to, to toil, to be wearied. And then he goes in the second part, those that are heavy laden means to have a full load placed upon you. To be maxed out in what you are doing. Let, let me just say, we could have pulled that out and says, come unto me, fellowship at the church. Okay. Come unto me, members that, that, that labor. And, and the thing is, we are caught between two worlds because some of us have this idea that I, I know what I want to do. I just want to quit the ministries that I am. I want to slip into a pew. I want to stand and sing. I want to go home and take a nap. I want to go to bed early. And I want to live my life. And then you're sitting there saying, hey, what am I doing for Christ? How am I serving, preaching, reaching, pulling in and lifting up what we've been called to do? And we're caught. And we're worn out. And fatigue brings frustration. It brings irritation. It robs the joy out of what you do. You love your kids, but they drive you nuts. Mommy, 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 mommy. I say, I don't, I don't know how to do this. How do you keep up? Jesus looks at them and he says, guys, come here. Come unto me. You were never made to do what you're doing right now. You're not cut out. I want you to notice when he says, come unto me. Maybe some of you need to circle that two-letter word in your Bible. Because it doesn't say, come unto the church. And I'm not preaching against the church today. This is a great place to hear about God and to worship God, but it's not the key. It's not come unto your spouse or that grandma that you've looked up to or that dad that you adored. It's not that spiritual leader, that spiritual mentor and all these other people that are in your life. God did not say come unto them. When we get stressed out, there's a lot of places that we run to, but the only place that you're going to find rest is in the presence of God. It's a very cliche thing to say. I'm just going to walk with Jesus. I'm thinking, all right, I, I went to Walmart last night and I walked in alone and I walked out alone, okay? Nobody walked up to me and says, hey, Tony, hey, Jesus, you know. But we say those words all the time and a lot of us don't understand, dear Lord, help me know what that means. Because his invitation was an invitation to come into his presence. He said, and I will give you rest, but this is the how is in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. In heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. He said, take my yoke. The yoke was a tool that went around an ox's neck. 
And they would take two of these ox or cows or however you want to look at it in your head. And they would strap their necks into these things. And as they plowed forward, they would plow forward together. They were shoulder to shoulder, neck to neck. They were side by side in what they were doing. What God was calling us to do and saying, yes, take up your cross. Yes, follow me. Yes, do everything that we listed, homework, church, school, whatever it is. But don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. Because most of us live our lives, and when we get to a tough spot, then that's when we, I need to pray and ask God to help me. And God says, no, the thing is, I desire to be with you from the very beginning. A lot of us miss this, mess this up. It's not religion. It is a relationship. Brent, can you come up here for a minute? I like to use Brent, number one, because he's a lot taller than me, and it kind of proves the point, and he plays Jesus in our play. It's just cool. This is, me and, me and Brent are friends. We do a lot of things together, and I love serving with Brent. But I want, I want you guys to see what God had in mind was this kind of friendship right here. That, that yoke up, no matter what I'm going to face, I have him by my side. But this is what a lot of us are doing, and I have nothing to pick up. I mean, we're we're carrying the thing, and we're doing our business, and we're worn out, and you're just like, Jesus, and then we run to church, and it's like, I had a rough week, and I need you in my life, and then we run out and do our thing, and we're trying to build that relationship with our spouse, and we're fighting and arguing, and we get mad, and we yell at them and everything, and then just like, this isn't working, oh God, why are, I just can't do this, she's so mean to me, and, da, 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 and we just, and, and that's the thing, see, he comforts you, and makes you feel good. And it's this constant thing. And I think that's what Jesus saw with the disciples. They would go out and they would carry this thing. And during the Christmas drama uh, prep thing, getting all this stuff in here. And and, and we would carry in these giant walls and beams and platforms and all this other stuff. And some of us could get gung-ho to carry it in by ourselves. And we'd get halfway down the aisle and say, all right, guys, somebody come help me. I'm about to drop this thing. Then we call for that help. See, the, the whole come unto me and they, they take my yoke upon you, it was a commitment to God. And it was not just your commitment to God, it was His commitment to you. His commitment to you. Meaning, no matter what we, fa- let's walk, no matter what we face, when I get there, He's getting there too. It's not a matter of us running around doing our things and then crying out to God in desperation to be like, can you put this back together? Can you fix this or whatever? And that's what we do. And let me tell you, let me show you what this looks like in there. It's it's not a matter of walking around with your Bible at home, you know, and just chanting Bible verses all day. But, oh, you're following me. That's good. I I like that. But everything that I do, it's a relationship. Just, Just put that in mind. And then live it with God. You see, a lot of times we're so distracted in life, we don't have a lot of time to fellowship. Because what he desired of that, what did he say? Take my yoke upon me and do what? Learn of me. See, what God wants us to do from this, of whatever we face, is for me to get to know him. He he said, when we're... Side by side, and me, when me and Brent, we do a lot of projects. We've done a lot of projects over the years. We, we've had a great time. But let me tell you, I've enjoyed the fellowship more than I've enjoyed the work, Brent. Last year, we, we coached our kids in, in football together, and we've, we, we've helped build part of the building. We, we were the first ones on the scene when we tore up the parking lot in a good way. And we, we've done projects around the church and everything, but the thing that I found out is I get to know him and he knows me, and we have an incredible fellowship of going forth. There's something that we're missing. When you're driving down the road and you're cranking into whatever it is, and I'm not trying to turn this into a message on music, but I tell you, a lot of what the world has to throw out there gets our minds off of him and on everything else. I have an opportunity in my car to put my focus and attention on my God through what I put into my head. And I learn about him. 
And when I face a situation and I'm sitting in my office and I'm saying, Lord, I don't know how, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't have to run to him. He's with me. You see, the disciples had Jesus, but we have the Holy Spirit. You guys realize that he said, I'll never leave thee no matter what I'm facing. But how many of us will go five, six days and never bow our heads You never pray, you never say, I need help with this, and I can't handle this, and I don't know how to fix this, and that's too big or too strong for me. Let's go on. We're talking about the partnership that we have. Can we go into the promise that he gave? He said, take my yoke upon me, and he said, come on all that weak, that weary, and I will give you, so I said, I will give you, woo, rest. See, through what me and Mr. Brand are doing here, when I face something, no matter what it is, the rest that I get, it's like carrying in these props and things like that. And then those, those platforms up are made of squares that are, some of them are 12 foot and some of them are 10 foot by 4 foot. And Joe and these guys could tell you they are heavy. And we get them to the front, we have to get it over, and guys are working all over the place, and we get up there, and, oh, and all of a sudden, I, I'm straining, I'm about to drop it, I can't do this anymore, and the other guys will see it, and everybody runs over there, and whoop, and all of a sudden, oh, you know, this isn't so bad. And we pick it up, and we get it through. When I am paired up with Jesus, and I am walking in fellowship through my prayer, and my reading, my study, and my worship, I hope today you weren't you know, just mumbling through the words. And I, I see some of you guys. You don't open your lips to say anything. God deserves our praise. He sits back and says, well, I don't like this song. It's not about you. It's not about you. And we sit there. I like that. There's, there, there, hey, you're never going to be happy with everything. But have you ever thought that maybe he's not happy with you? He deserves our praise. He deserves our attention. He deserves our prayers. He deserves all those things. And when he said, come unto me, he wants it. Have you ever thought about that? He is inviting you into his presence because he loves to help you and be with you. All that he is, I get. Because then I hit something bigger than I am. He's going to get me through because we're yoked up. I can't face anything. I can't come to anything. I I don't have to conquer and overstep or handle or plow through. Those those ox would be shoulder to shoulder and arm in arm. And what would happen is why they would have two of them instead of one. Because that one could only handle what he could handle. And when he got to a rock or a rut or whatever it was, he would have to stop because he couldn't go any further. That's the average church member in America. I just can't. I can't handle these kids. I can't handle this job. I can. And God's sitting there saying, you weren't meant to. What can't God handle? Seriously, what can't God handle? (laughs) I'm telling you, there is nothing you will ever come to that he can't handle. So as long as I'm here, I don't have to worry about a thing. I don't have to fear what's coming. I don't have to sit there and go, honey, there's no way we're going to pay that. There's no way we have time for that. There's no way we can give that much. There's no way, there's no way, there's no way. With my God, all things are possible. Are you missing it? Are you exhausted? And God says, you know what? I'm never exhausted. I get that. I get his strength. I get all that. (laughs) Everything that he is, I get. You're going to sit there and say, that sounds good for everybody else, but you just don't mean. I'm not that, and I'm not that good church person. I'm not this or whatever. You know what else I get from him? I get grace. Remember everything he gets. He said, I am meek and lowly. He said, man, my compassion, my love, everything. He said, man, I desire. You know what? I I, I believe that even when we hit those tough spots in our life and you're just saying, I just can't and I won't. God's sitting there going, dude, I've been waiting for this, man. You ready? You ready to do this? 
It's time for you to learn of me. It's time for you to sit there and say, instead of blessed be the name of the Lord, and you sit there, and then you hit that spot in your life where you can't do it. And you say, Lord, I can't. You ready to do that? Boom, boom, bang, right through it. I don't know what those sound effects were. <laughs> and you plow through that. And then you're, come up here. Then you come up here, and you're, you're turning around, and you're like, I have no idea how we did that. And God's like, dude, I do. This is where praise comes from. It's, if, if you've not learned of him, you have nothing to praise him for. A lot of people, they, they stand up there and they sing the empty words because all you've done all the way to church was complain about life and problems and aches and pains. We all have them. But everything changed. When those disciples say, let me tell you, let me tell you what made all the difference. Let me bring you back to when we figured out that with God all things are possible. Let me take you back to when I figured out that I was just a fisherman. But with my God, he gave me strength and wisdom and mercy and everything. And no matter what I face, I got it all. And I didn't want to make one step. I wasn't going to step in one direction because a lot of times we get way ahead of God. And you're up there and you're worn out and you're tired and like, I got to get out of that class and I can't do this anymore. And I'll tell you what, and you're miserable at home and you're miserable in what you do and you dread the next practice and the next performance and the next class and the next whatever because you're doing it by yourself. You will be weary in well-doing. That was a promise from God. I will give you rest. When you are too tired to go, I will push through. I, um, I just bought this house. And uh, I've already told you, I overextended myself. I did. And I, I had a deadline to be out of my apartment. And our, our, the house that I bought was not livable. It was a wreck. And I remember just praying to God. I was... I was too prideful to go bug all, everybody that I knew and say, come fix my house. Blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, one by one, people started showing up. And I mean, Mike Myers and Phil Purdy did my tile floor. And I had guys come in and put on my front door. And Jamie and these guys showed up. And Bob, and I could go on and on. And I, could list, I could list 50 names for you right now. And I look back at my life and I thought, Lord, I, I don't remember calling all of them. I remember talking to Mike, getting advice, and he said, you shouldn't be doing that for And I was like, well, I've got to get it done. And he says, no, we've got to get that done. You know what I experienced? In, in an everyday way, I experienced God because I learned of him and he knows me. So when I faced that and I said, Lord, I, I just don't, I can't. I experienced what it meant for him to say, but I can. And then I get through and I look back and I t- tell Jenna, I said, wow, how in the world? And that, that, that victory turns into my praise of what my God has done. Thank you, Brent. Let me close with one last thing. We looked at the partnership of come unto me, yoke up with me, learn of me, stand by my side. We looked at the promise, which is what Christ said. He said, I will give you rest. I will give you the power. I will give you the strength. I will give you grace. I will give you the endurance. I will give you everything that you need. Rest for the weary. But he closes this out. And I say this because of the title of the message He gives us the pleasure. There should be joy in serving our God. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy. The yoke is the mission, the walk, the journey, the partnering, side by side, going forward. He said, when you're partnered with me, it ought not to be frustrating or hard or difficult. That it does not mean, God never said, I'm going to pull you out. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to carry you over. Just think about that, uh, the two ox being there together. They were facing everything together, but God did not pull them out. Some of you guys are waiting for a cloud. 
God picks you up and puts you on there and you just float through life, you know, on a harp or something and just, that's not the Christian life. God is going to be with you as you do this, but all of a sudden you, you are getting to do the happy dance a little more often when you see God showing you victories through what he's doing. Are you missing that part? Because I can tell you, all of us looking around this room today, there's a lot of Christians that just dread Sunday, they dread ministry. They dread Monday mornings. There's no joy, you're worn, joy, you're worn out, you're frustrated, you, you've lost everything that there should be there. And you feel like I either have to quit or, or feel and feel guilty or I have to take on more and then just be worn out. And I have realized from Scripture, God never meant for either of those. So who or what are you yoked up with? Is it, is it money and success? Is it, what, what, what are you partnered up to? Because if it's not Jesus, the only thing that will come from it is exhaustion. And if you're exhausted today at that point of wanting to give up, then something is wrong. 